This is the FM Gold channel of All India Radio. In the program News Analysis, we now bring you an interview with L.D. Ralthe, Indian High Commissioner in Brunei on Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh's visit to Brunei. The interviewer is Sharik Noor, AIR correspondent. Prime Minister Dr. Singh will be visiting Brunei on 9th October in connection with ASEAN Summit. This is the first time in 30 years an Indian Prime Minister will be visiting the country. The visit is expected to further improve our already warm relations. There are many things in common in the culture of the two countries. The local language of Brunei, Malay, has many Sanskrit and Urdu words. Indian Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh is arriving in Brunei on 9th October to attend the ASEAN and East Asia Summit. How significant is this visit in context of India-Brunei bilateral relations? The visit is extremely important in terms of bilateral relations, not just on the regional side. This is mainly because this is the first time the Prime Minister of India will visit Brunei in nearly 30 years of diplomatic relationships. We hope that it will provide a big boost to bilateral relations also. The theme of ASEAN is Our People, Our Future Together. How this theme connects with bilateral relations between Brunei and India? India and Brunei have had a long history of meeting with each other, of exchanging with each other. The Malay language, which is also used in Brunei, has many roots in Sanskrit, Urdu and the traditions practiced here also have similarities to India across the religious borders, whether Hindu, Buddhist or Islamic. So the theme of the ASEAN actually fits in very well with our Look East policy and integration with the Southeast Asian region in particular. Our people together is actually very appropriate. What do you think the main issues likely to be discussed in the ASEAN and East Asia summits? There are many common issues in the world today and particularly so for the region. Mainly what we have ourselves been grappling with, food security is one, maritime security is another, basically ensuring that maritime lanes which carry 80% of world trade and for us, 70% of our trade with the world, especially in this region, namely the South China Sea, these are issues that are burning. Then there are nowadays questions of environment, there's a question of energy, especially renewable energy, and disaster management, which is now becoming something that requires international cooperation and support. And these are some of the issues that will probably be taken up uh, in the two summits. The EA summit, as you know, is a leader summit. So there is really no agenda. The leaders will meet. They will pick up whatever they feel is in their mind or whatever is common to them. And they will discuss. And we will take their decisions forward. On the ASEAN-India context... There are issues of connectivity, which the ASEAN is working on. They are looking at an ASEAN economic community by 2015, which will form an important economic pillar in the region, for which we also need to prepare. As you are aware, the ministers have already agreed on the agreements on investment and trade in services. They are in the final touches. We were hoping, that is the Indian side, we were hoping that we would be able to sign agreement during this summit this week. But there are still minor issues that need to be cleaned up and we are hoping that they will be signed up in December at the WTO meeting so that we can say next year that we do have these agreements. So these are areas we are highly interested. Connectivity, as you know, we are connected physically and by the seas with the Southeast Asian region. So we are working on those land connectivities. And nowadays, of course, in the ICT sector, we have some role to play. 
So connectivity is central to the ASEAN group and we feel that we have a very keen interest in that. And uh, apart from that, in the ASEAN India, we are looking at uh, capacity building through our EDT uh, economic development centers and uh, we are helping with uh, English language uh, courses in some of the countries, especially the CLMV. The Mekong Ganges uh, plan also forms a part of this. Many areas, and of course, as I said already, even in the ASEAN, perhaps we will take up a little bit of the maritime security issues. India and Brunei have a strong bilateral ties. Both the countries enjoy a fair degree of commonality in their perception of international issues. Brunei supports India's claim for its candidature for a permanent membership in United Nations. Do India see Brunei as a strategic partner? All our partners, you can say, are important. I don't know if strategic can mean many different things at different levels. So all important partners are strategic in some way or another. So therefore, any partner is strategic. In Brunei, of course, we have had a very good history of, how do I say, uh, connectivity. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the language, the cultures, this give us a very stable and very amiable relationships. And in Brunei, we feel that we have a friend who know us, who understand us, and who have been supportive of our role in the international fora. The bilateral trade between the two countries has been increased in recent years. Is there a scope to boost it further? Trade nowadays is not just uh, physical goods. In terms of physical goods, at the moment there is practically only one way. That is the petroleum and gas products of Brunei for our requirements. In terms of physical goods, you know, the population of Brunei is hardly 4 lakhs. That is including expatriate population. So there is really not that much boost that can be done. So we have to look at high-value goods and perhaps maybe set up some manufacturing of high-value goods in Brunei which can be uh, exported via air to neighboring countries, especially the bimp Ega region, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia region. And, of course, by improving, if Brunei has gas and extra petroleum to export to us, that would increase the trade. But significantly, physical goods are not going to give us any major boost in figures, trade figures. What we can do, of course, is invest in each other's countries. Brunei has some extra sovereign funds, and we have a lot of infrastructural areas where uh, they could put uh, that money. Perhaps uh, gas pipelines, as Gail has asked them, invited them to participate in the downstream activities in India. That could be a big boost if they came in. Sir, in the services sector, India has been exporting its main power to Brunei in increasingly good number. Do you think that India-Brunei bilateral trade will get boost if the India-ASEAN services pact comes into existence? Of course, any agreement that facilitates movement of people, especially of high-value skilled workers, that always helps because when they go abroad, People who earn do send their earnings mostly back to their own countries. So we could see some improvement in that sector. Already we have a fairly good number of Indian professionals working in Brunei at the very top end and also at the lower end. Any agreement that helps to facilitate this movement would definitely give a boost. There are about 10,000 Indians in Brunei, including about 500 doctors. It is said that medical services are being run by Indians in Brunei. Being run, I cannot say. Being supported by Indian doctors, definitely I can say yes. And uh, it's a great 
pleasure to see Indian doctors, even at primary health centers, not just in the top end hospitals, helping Brunei in their health care. For us, it's uh, especially nice because when we go, they know our problems. There are some Indian associations active in Brunei. Are they helping in cementing people-to-people contact between the two nations? All associations, whether they are active or not, do help the work of the embassy or the high commission because they enlarge the scope of outreach to the local population. The Indian associations in Brunei have been doing just that. One very important thing I see them doing is maintaining their culture and traditions. So they teach their children about our culture, our traditions, and in some cases even in the languages also. So I see them not just as ambassadors for India, but also as preserving our culture through the associations. So we find that some local people also join those classes, language, both even regional and Hindi and also the dance classes. So definitely they do help our job. 30 years of diplomatic relations between India and Brunei will be completed next year. Do you expect India-Brunei relations will reach a new high in the coming year? What is fortunate is that this year Brunei is a chairman for ASEAN. What many people don't know is that Brunei actually also took over as the coordinator for ASEAN with India last year and that lasts for the next three years. So next year also it will still be the coordinator. Hopefully that will facilitate not just activities with the ASEAN but also improve and increase our interaction bilaterally. Actually, I must say that this year alone we have seen almost as much activity as we have seen in the past 27 years. We have had so many ministers and delegations visiting each other's country and some even at the social level, cycling expeditions and things like that. So definitely I expect that relations may not see a major boost in that sense, but they are moving forward and interaction is improving. We are actually trying to get visa on arrival for Bruneians so that it will be easier for them to go to India on as tourists. Though we do give them visa almost in a day here, but technically visa on arrival would help increase their appetite for India. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You are listening to an interview with L.D. Ralte, Indian High Commissioner in Brunei, on Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh's visit to Brunei. The interviewer was Shari Knoor, AIR correspondent. It came to in the program News Analysis, produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.nic.in. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.